welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do another vlog. First of all, my head feels so empty without my glasses. Um, I don't know where I put them last night because I'm a little teeny, a teeny little bit drunk. So I have to find them. I really hope I didn't forget them at work. Anyways, today we have a super interesting concept that I'm so excited to do. So basically, I got this idea because my friend Danny over at Current Chapter did this really cool like vlog where she decided to pick out a book at random that she knew nothing about in the fantasy and sci-fi section, read it, and give a review. And the idea was that Danny and even myself, and I'm sure a lot of people pretty much know what fantasy and sci-fi books are coming out because it is a genre that we predominantly read. But what I wanted to do was spice it up a little, add a little spice. I don't read thrillers. I've tried. I don't like them um, more often than not. They're like a good time, but I'm not here for them for a long time. You know what I mean? However, at Indigo, which is the bookstore here in Canada, the Barnes and Noble, if you will, has this section um, where they have like less expensive books. And it's basically like a lot of the books that I see there, I see on Book Outlet as well. So it's kind of like overstock books, I'm assuming. And they always have really great deals. And when I went that day that they were selling like three thrillers for 20 bucks. So I'll insert clips of me like posing with the books that I made my sister film. <laughs> know nothing about thrillers i absolutely have no idea what any of these three books are i do follow some people who read thrillers like gabby reads and books and lala and i've never heard them talk about these books either so i was really excited because these are literally literally three books that i've never heard about before i don't really feel like reading the synopsises because i feel like we'll get a better enjoyment out of it as me and you, you know? So we have Three Perfect Letters by Heidi Perks. Then I picked up No Going Back by Sheena Kamal. Love this cover. And then I have Lady in the Lake by Laura Lippman. And the reason I picked this one out specifically is because all kinds of thrillers have lakes in them. So I'm interested in seeing this trope. Plus all of these books have an audiobook on script, which is really good because I feel like I might lose interest with the books if they're not like captivating me enough and the audiobook will like help me go through them so i'm really happy that all three of them have audiobooks and i decided that i'm gonna start with the one that i'm not the most interested in this is the one that my sister kind of convinced me to get and i do believe it is the shortest one it's 325 pages yes these stickers actually are really bothering me so i'm just gonna take it out since we're starting with this one and obviously like over the course of these books i will kind of start to pick up on the synopsis and kind of tell you what's going on i do do want to avoid spoilers so i'll do the best that i can um i'm notoriously bad at spoiling things um because i don't know what counts and what doesn't count so if i spoil something i'm really sorry i'm gonna try not to spoil like the overall mystery some things might slip out and i'm just warning you now so let's go get started with three perfect liars hello so just a little update for the vlog i am now 50 pages into the book and i have more of like an understanding of the novel so there are three main characters laura who is a i don't understand really where they work i'll be honest she works at an agency called uh, morris and wood from what i understand it seems to be like marketing and basically she was like a head director there and she took time off to have her baby the second main character is a girl named mia and mia was the one who replaced laura during her maternity but now mia i guess did a really good job or something's going on with the ceo and now mia is kind of looking like she's gonna stay and laura is not happy about it the third main character is harry's wife jenny Janie. so clearly all of these women have a relationship to the main ceo of the book at the start of the book you learn that a house was on fire obviously and now there's also a third element of the book of the investigation going on so some parts of the book are written in in like an interview format because they are being interviewed by the head police officer so i think the mystery or the thrilling aspect of the book is basically this fire and what happened i don't know if anyone dies 
but we'll see. An interesting thing that is going on in the novel is women in respect to their jobs and their families. And I think it's going to tackle that type of topic where women kind of have to give up one half of themselves in order to have either be a successful mother or a successful like career woman. And I think that that aspect of it and that discussion will be either really interesting or really cliche and I'm not gonna like it so we'll see so far the writing's really simple I'm enjoying it the pacing is pretty standard but something I appreciate it's not going too quick so far and not going too slow overall I'm having quite a good time with it the only thing that's bothering me a little bit is that I could tell that the audiobook and this book are different because I'm reading them like simultaneously at the same time and I think this was written for more like American readers and the audiobook is set in London and even though this book is still set in London there are some like little words that are changed from the audiobook to the physical book and it's like kind of throwing me off when I'm reading alongside it but other than that like that's my biggest complaint so far. So we'll really see where the themes go and how they adjust and that I think will be the big aspect for me of whether or not I like this book. Due to the fact that YouTube will um, copyright the Billy Talent song that is playing here and my boyfriend drunk singing along, just enjoy this scene because I just wanted to like let it be known that I went to a concert for the first time in like three years and I'm so excited about it. Hello, welcome to a new day. I'm a little hungover, I'll be honest. I went to a concert last night, my first concert in two and a half years. I'm super like riding on a high right now. I went to see Rise Against and Billy Talent and it was fucking sick and not to be too cringe, but I had a lot of fun last night. I'm definitely a little hungover. Um, But to talk about, because I didn't update you yesterday, I got to page 231 of the audiobook for Three Perfect Liars. There's a really interesting discussion going on because there is a mystery uh, about one of the girls and we don't know like her motives. We don't know what she's doing, but the other two women in the book are kind of somehow related to this mysterious character, their lives are affected as mothers. Their careers, their families are affected due to the choices that they've made that men typically don't have to make. So I think that this is touching upon things that are really interesting. One of the main characters' husband chooses to stay home and therefore not work, like halt his career in order to further Laura's career. Um, at this agency place. So that discussion is also really interesting. It doesn't, it's not like as fleshed out, but it's still an interesting aspect to I think Laura's character. I think this is the type of book that I like, but I don't know like what to call it. Like, I don't know if this is really a thriller or if it's just a mystery. Like I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't actually think this would count as a thriller because there's nothing thrilling about it. Like there is this fire that we know happens and everything in the book is leading up to this fire, but it's not like thrilling in a way like it's really just discovering what happened i don't even know if so if anyone died in the fire like i have no idea so like i said really enjoying this i know i'm definitely gonna finish it today and probably start another book but i am just interested to see how this ends and what happens and i don't know exactly how i'm gonna feel about the ending but i'm having a good time and that particularly is due to the discussions that are having in this book i will keep you posted because i'll probably be finishing this maybe on my lunch break and i'll have an update for you then hello so i did end up finishing three perfect liars by heidi perks right now and i ended up giving this a 3.5 stars overall. Like I think was pretty clear from the rest of the clips reading this book, I was really surprised with how much I ended up enjoying the novel. I think there was a really great mystery in here and I really love the tension that was built up throughout the book. But for me, and I think it's pretty clear again from this vlog, the characters are what really made it for me in the book and really brought what would be an okay experience to an overall enjoyed experience. I loved that we followed three women who have to make difficult decisions 
decisions between their careers and their families and the entire beginning portion of the novel was really captivating because of this and I love the discussions that Perks was bringing forth by tackling on this topic. This made the characters feel a lot more nuanced than from what I've read in the past with my previous experience with mystery thrillers. I empathized with each of them individually in a way that really made me root and worry for them which is not something I've seen or had before with this type of genre. All of them had differing motivations to the penultimate event in the book and that's what made the novel a lot more readable for me but I think that all of that kind of ended in the last 15% of the book. The grand finale to the mystery was a bit anticlimactic for me and I really do wish that it was resolved a lot better. I think the reveal of the arsonist just fell a little flat for me. Also, something that hindered my overall enjoyment with the book is really the discrepancies between the audiobook and the physical book. In the beginning, it wasn't as bad. There were, I think I mentioned it, like sometimes things or words were used in place of others and I thought that that was just being me having an American copy. But then I started to notice from switching between reading the book along with the audiobook is that like at certain points, like whole paragraphs were missing. It's not like it hindered the book to the point where if you didn't hear that paragraph, you wouldn't have understand what was going on, but it did eliminate some of the nuance I think that was in specific side characters. I also noticed there were a lot of errors in the physical copy and one that comes to mind is when the detective is interviewing Mia, the character Mia, she calls her Laura. I think that could be really confusing if you're just reading it physically because you're like wait what the fuck you know and I was just like that doesn't make sense but when you hear the detective say Mia it makes sense because they're having a conversation so it was like mistakes like that that I just felt was really like weird and, and like could have easily been edited and I don't understand what happened there. Overall though I still really enjoyed my time with this um, but I do want to just say like I don't read mystery thrillers so this could be the worst thing in the world and I wouldn't even know. So next I have these two books left. Honey you've got a big storm coming. But this pink one No Going Back by Sheena Kamal has been really like calling to me. So let's take off the sticker. We're going to read this one next. Again, I don't know what it's about. However, I wanted to see if there was a reason I should read like one before the other. So I was kind of glimpsing at the synopsises and I saw that this is technically the third book in a series with this character but I don't really think that makes a difference. I have read like cozy mysteries before and you know you kind of just jump in and it doesn't really matter so I'm hoping it doesn't matter because I was really 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 excited for this book for no reason because as you know I just picked them up by covers but this cover really called to me so I'm really hoping that me going into a third book won't deter me or like confuse me in any way so the audiobook is on script again so I will be once again reading this alongside listening to it and I hope I have a really enjoyable experience but ever since I saw that I've been a little bit worried but we'll see how it goes okay so I'm about 40 pages into no going back and i realized that the first book in this series is the lost ones which i'll put a picture of it here it was kayla's literally dead book club pick and my friend danny over at current chapter also read this book so it seems like she's a pretty popular author and i just i had no idea that the even that this book the lost ones was the series and this is the series that i'm currently reading my mind is blown Anyways, just as an update, 40 pages in, I don't feel like I needed to read the last two books. Like I'm kind of picking up and I think Sheena Kamal does a really good job at this of like integrating what happened in the first two books into this book so I can kind of like follow along with what's going on. Am I enjoying it? That's another story. I'm not 100% sure right now. Sheena Kamal's writing is really different um from the previous thriller that i read i'm currently listening to the audio and bonnie turpin is the narrator and i am enjoying the narration um but the writing is very quick and i'm not sure if that's thriller based sheena kamal's writing not 100 percent sure um but again we're only 40 pages in right now we're dealing with nora she just escaped from Chicago um and I don't want to get too much into details because I realize that I would be potentially spoiling two other books but basically Bonnie um is running away from this man and she just wants to make sure that her daughter is okay this is where we are right now um we'll see how it goes we'll see how much I can feel comfortable sharing about the book but yeah right now no real thoughts developing up here hello it's a new day um I think I think I updated last night, but I did get to page 200 of No Going Back. 
it's okay. I'm, I feel really bad about um, how I feel about it. And I truly, truly don't believe that this is due to the fact that I haven't read the first two books. I just genuinely am not vibing with Sheena Kamal's writing. The story is also not gripping me. And like, sure, that could be because I don't actually care about the main character. Maybe. I'm currently watching Kalia Sprints and I'm listening to the book on audio. I do predict that I will be finishing it today um, and hopefully I will have better thoughts. But so far this book just really isn't doing it for me. Hello, so I'm currently um, in the middle of work, but I was listening to No Going Back on audio and I was also watching my friends Kalia and Zoe while they were sprinting and... I ended up finishing this book. Um, I have like thoughts, but no thoughts on this book. So the thing is that um, I don't believe the fact that this is a trilogy and me reading the last book hindered my enjoyments for this book at all. I really don't. And I was debating not reading this because of that fact. Like I was like, maybe this isn't fair. It's not the author's fault that I dove into a third book without knowing. However, there is nothing on the cover that would indicate that this is the third book in a series. So you could potentially pick it up randomly like I did. And that's the whole point of this experiment, I feel a little bit, is that like I did pick this up randomly. If I wasn't a user of Goodreads or I didn't actively like engage with the book community, I wouldn't know that this is a third book, right? Like even in the synopsis, it doesn't say that this is a third book. Like it just explains what happened in the previous two novels. So again, there is really nothing here that would indicate that it should be read as a trilogy. And therefore I do think it's fair for me to read it because people might go into this reading it on its own. And I have to say like as a standalone mystery, it didn't really bring anything forward. It wasn't really thrilling. Was it action packed? Yes. A lot of things do happen. The story is not convoluted enough that you can't pick up on what happened in the previous books because Credit to the author, she does do an excellent job letting readers know what happened in the previous books and letting know Nora as a character, Nora's relationship with other people. Like everything is really explained. So I truly do believe you can read this on its own. But that being said, as its own thing, it really isn't the most thrilling and it's not the most mysterious of mysteries. You know from the beginning of the book who is stalking Nora. You know from the beginning of the book who is attacking her daughter. You know everything from the beginning of the book. So it's kind of working as a cat and mouse game and not really like a mystery of sorts. So based on like Kalia and Zoe giving me confidence, I do think I can rate this. I would give it two stars. Sheena Kamal has really great writing style. Like it is kind of simple and plain, but at the same time, I feel like it does pull you in, or at least there is that testament that I just said where she provides that background knowledge that you need to understand Nora as a character, to feel engaged with the book. It's just that the story itself and the plot itself really gave nothing um, to me at all. <laughs> so that being said, like I know this is pretty brutal um, to give the book, especially, and I know, I know, I hear myself, I hear it coming out of myself. I did not read the whole trilogy. I just don't think this book was good. I'm really sad about it. I wanted this <laughs> video to go a bit better. And I was really counting on this one because I was obsessed with the cover. But yeah, I just don't think it really brought anything forward and didn't really do much for me. And honestly, I think if you did spend a lot of time with this main character and you did read two books, I feel like you would be disappointed. I think I would be disappointed if I had read this whole series and this was the last book. I really do. So that's that. I'm going to stop like harping on it because I feel terrible, obviously. So we're just going to move on to the next book. And that book is Lady in the Lake by Laura Lippman. What do I know about this? Obviously nothing. Um, Just that hopefully it's a thriller because the last two have been like mysteries. <laughs> um, But... I think Laura Lipman is a famous crime writer. So basically in the back, like her little blurb, it says that she's been recognized as a distinctive voice in mystery fiction and was named one of the most essential crime writers of the last hundred years. It's a bold statement there. I'm really hoping that this book is good. That is the um, basis of 
how I'm feeling. I just really want to read a good mystery and I want to be surprised. also hate this book guys maybe this is why not walking into a bookstore and picking up any book we see with a nice cover has gone out of fashion um so I've gotten about 100 pages into Lady in the Lake and essentially the main perspective that we're following is from a woman named Dermani. She is a newly divorcee who moves into a rough neighborhood um, in order to like experience life. Um, she wants to be a reporter and she's just not finding satisfaction in her life being a mom and wife. But in addition to that, we also get a lot of perspectives from like different people in the town, either those that interact with Maddie or those that interact with the girl whose dead body Maddie later then finds. So I'm gonna be really honest, um, the book is quite boring uh, and confusing because of these multiple like perspectives and because the story is moving really slowly there's also like two murders going on honestly um I don't know I'm not enjoying this I don't want to DNF because I do actually want to give thrillers a shot and I'm assuming that um the mystery will get more mysterious also sorry if you can hear my extremely loud washing machine i'm a little unsure about um the overall discussions that are having in the book i do appreciate like a woman finding her independence and wanting to be like more than a mother or whatever um kudos to maddie i guess but the first perspective in the book was from a deceased black woman. And then we also have another character in here who Maddie has sex with. Um, and he is a black man and he's very stereotypically written. I am speaking from the perspective of a white woman in Canada in 2020. Um, and this takes place in the United States in 1960. I don't know if I'm like reaching too much, but it feels very weird coming from a white lady you know what i mean that is also like making me i guess not that interested in the book i don't know please let me know if you've read this before how you felt about this representation um but it is mm, a little weird you know so that's where i'm at right now i am listening to this audiobook while working so i don't know i will continue working and update you when I need to. Hello, welcome to another day. I have gone between working today and editing my March wrap up, which should be going up before this video. So I haven't really had time to pick up the lady in the lake, but honestly, we're not missing much. Like we're really, we're really not missing anything. So we're 200 pages in and basically, I don't even know like what I explained, uh, but essentially Maddie just really wants to be a reporter. And that's what this book is really about. I am feeling very let down by this challenge. I have about 137 pages before I can complete this and officially say that I don't like this book and think it's really boring. And then we can finally end this vlog on a disappointing note, but a confirming note. So I'll see you then. So I finished this um, and I gave it one star. <laughs> we'll go into like a literary critique aspect. Um, there are way 
too many perspectives in this book like way too many this book i know i didn't even i barely spoke about it but this book basically moves through like multiple characters perspectives that kind of surround this mystery and surround maddie who is investigating this mystery and that was confusing in and of itself i think they were supposed to be like shoehorned in to distract you and be like who could it be what is the, who is the murderer what is happening i don't think it was effective i have really liked books where one chapter follows one character and the story is told through that and this was just not done in a way that I enjoyed at all. The second thing is that Maddie as a main character, you never ever ever like relate to her or want her to solve this mystery. In my Goodreads review, I wrote that this is like a thriller version of The Help. It's basically following this woman, white woman, privileged, rich, white woman trying to solve the murder of a black woman and inserting herself and using her privilege as a woman. She says it several times like men just want you to flirt with them and like this is how I'm gonna get things solved and like if it was written well or like Maddie was a cool character I would have been like yes bitch we support women's wrongs but I could not support her because she was just a terrible person not to mention that the black men in this book were very stereotypically written the entire com like it was just so poorly done I can't emphasize it enough how much I hated this book it really was like a white savior trope and I wasn't here for it the way that this book ends did it make sense? Nothing about this was done well. And that's it. That's literally all I can say. One star. I hated this. Let's just summarize and finish up this vlog because I'm so disappointed with how it turned out. In this vlog, you saw me read three thrillers, a genre that I am not particularly well versed in and probably never will be again. So the first book I read for this vlog was my favorite one. It was the most well written. It had the most interesting aspects to the book. Everything I think was done well. It just wasn't like the most thrilling book, but genuinely I had the best time with this book and I gave it a 3.5 stars. I really liked it. Out of all these books, I definitely recommend this this one the most if you like mysteries I, I genuinely think this is a good mystery and like in my head now this is like the five star read of the video then we start going downhill with no going back by sheena kamal is it the fault of this book you saw like my discussion surrounding it there's nothing on the book that lets you know it is the third in a series and i feel like that's an important thing to say um and i do think that people can go into the bookstore like myself pick it up and not know that this is a third in a series. So basing it on its own, the thrill of the book was not interesting at all because you know what's happening at the beginning of the book. Like you know who's stalking her, you know who's trying to hurt her. It was like fairly predictable what was gonna happen. And because of that, I ended up giving it a two stars. It just wasn't the most engaging thing in the world. And lastly, we have Lady in the Lake by Laura Lipman. We already spoke about this. One star, hated it so much. These books will be returning somewhere. I will definitely be unhauling them. I'm not happy about it. Um, This experiment is really disappointing, but I guess that's the purpose. Like maybe having good reads and maybe being a part of a book community is a good thing because I'm not really wasting my time on books that I know nothing about. I know that people at least enjoy the books that I'm hearing about, whereas in this case, I haven't heard about any of them and they were boring. So with that being said, um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog a little bit. I'm a little bit worried that like I have nothing to offer, but I'm just gonna post this anyways, whatever. I do read books that I enjoy. So if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias to see like what I'm reading, what I'm enjoying, I do leave a link down below to my Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram if you would like to follow me there. And then because it is the end of the video, please do me a solid, keep my spirits up and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. I need some encouragement here. I need it from you. I'm getting a call uh, on Microsoft Teams. So I don't know how to end these things without being awkward. So I will see you next time. Okay, bye.